Thank you so much. Jazakumal khairan to Sister Amara too, mashallah, beautiful. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadi wa ala ahli wa sahbi salam. Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'atuhu sahla, wa anta taj'alu al-hazna idha shi'ta sahla. I'm just going to put you all on mute, inshallah. Okay, bismillah. So this uh, journey of Isra and Mi'raj, um, if those of you who heard uh, the talk, if you're in Muhammadan Lights, so a lot of there's a lot of difference of opinion on when it occurred. So I know that you know some um, uh, say that uh, it was on the 27th of Rajab, but this is you know this is common practice. And the reason you know I'm going to build up to it's why um, I'm mentioning this. I think it's very important when we talk about Isra and Mi'raj to understand that it is not necessarily on the 27th of Rajab. Actually, the scholars differed vastly on when you go back to um, the scholars of Sira and scholars of Hadith, they, there's a lot of difference upon it um, in that when did the Isra and Mi'raj occur? So some of them say this, uh, there's a half as a Shami, he has a book on Mi'raj of Kabir, the Great Ascension. So he mentions these aqwal, he says some say it happened in the 12th year, so a ye one year before the Hijrah. Um, and this is, we can say, um, so he's giving different opinions. So he says, some say the 12th year, which um, we know that the 12th year is when the first bay'ah of Aqaba took place, which is when the first um, Muslims from Medina gave an oath of protection to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or oath, you know, to obey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It wasn't, uh, later on it became the oath of protection. So, so in that sense, and then there's uh, even, I believe, even Qadi Iyad, he said, uh, he mentioned that it was five years before the Hijrah, which um, this is even before the year of sadness, as we know. So um, the year of sadness was around the seventh year. And uh, so this was before, say, the Khadija passed away, before Abu Talib passed away, right? And so... Um, and of course, if it was the 12th year, it's already been two years since they passed away. And now, even if we say it was in that year, see the Khadija it is uh, said to have passed away, that she passed away in Ramadan, whereas Rajab is, of course, before Ramadan, right? So there's these things that, um, that we have to keep in mind. Why? Why is this important? Because we hear so often that the Isra was brought as a way to um, ease the difficulty of the Prophet And he was going to such a difficult time and you know, his um, beloved wife passed away, his uncle who was his caretaker passed away and then he thought if happened and it was so, there was so much difficulty and hardship. And so it was brought, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this gift uh, as a um, to, to make things easier, to strengthen his heart, his blessed heart, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and make things easier, right? And this is what I want to say that we have to rethink that if we are going to accept that, and there are these differences, strong differences, that uh, there's some people who said that it was ijma that it happened on this year. <laughs> Right, if it has some uh, claims, there's a demat, where, which it is, and you know, there's a lot of, you know, but um, uh, so there's there's so many differences. Actually, I wanted to mention that some of the scholars say it happened in Rabi al Awal, and amongst them is Imam Nawawi. And I personally, without doing any research in terms of the Asanid, okay, but just my heart is more inclined to um, it being in Rabi al Awal because Rabi al Awal is full of events that happened. Uh, to his person it is a special is a month of the Prophet and this event Isra and Mi'raj was for what reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us okay so you know let's move away from the narrative that was for appeasing the Prophet for you know strengthening his heart for for you know he was very sad and it was very difficult those things did happen right but did the is what was the reason reason for or for the isra? Allah subhanahu wa taala tells us. I will be in the shaytan al-jib. Subhanallahi asra bi abdihi layla min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa ila al-masjid al-aqsa ladi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min ayatina. 
إنه هو السميع البصير. He said, "Holy is glory be to him who has carried his ser- servant, his slave, sallallahu alaihi wasallam." This is the أشرف الأسماء من أشرف الأسماء sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is one of the most beautiful, noblest of his names that he's the servant of Allah subhanahu wa taala, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In uh, by night, from so he who carried his servant by night from the Masjid al Haram. The holy mosque in, uh, you know, in Mecca, of course, to the Masjid al-Aqsa, the farthest mosque, in whose surroundings we have blessed, that we may show him some of our signs. Ninuriyahu min ayatina, so we may show him our signs, some of our signs, and then we see in um, Surah Najm what is. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said? لقد رأى من آياته من لقد رأى من آيات ربه الكبرى. I'm, I'm, I think I'm making a mistake saying how I said لقد رأى من آياته من آيات ربه الكبرى. Finally, I I haven't memorized and I forgot how to say the, that that line uh, that ayah. But uh, say Allah subhanahu wa taala says indeed he saw uh, the greatest signs uh, in so Surah Najm. He says in that he says indeed there he saw the greatest signs, the the greatest sign of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And what is the greatest sign of Allah subhanahu wa taala? The the seeing of Allah subhanahu wa taala. The seeing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this is what we, what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Himself He is saying that Isra was for to show His slaves. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala made the Isra to show His slave, who is the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, His signs, and the greatest of those signs which He saw was the seeing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Himself. This was the great of His of His signs, and we know for everything. Right when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is the asal, he is the or- origin, he is the first, he is the source, and then we are, we follow, right? So we follow. We he sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The journey was for him. It happened to him, and he saw the signs. And you know what? After that, we became part of it. We became part of that journey because then the signs were related to us and. And the, we part, part we t- uh, took part in that, in seeing those signs, right through him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this it was an honor to us. So he was, of course, first, foremost. He is the asl for with everything, and then and those signs are for us. And for us, the the signs are we didn't see the the that of Allah subhanahu wa taala like he did, but we saw. What we had in this world was the, that of Muhammadiyah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That was our greatest sign. That was the greatest sign that it was the the person of Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who saw Allah subhanahu wa taala. For us, that was our greatest sign, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So let me, instead of jumping here and there, I'm going to try to go through a little bit about the story story of Isra and take it in a different way, um, inshallah, than uh, maybe a lot of us ha- are used to hearing. So, so the Prophet ﷺ, he starts from, they say, um, from some narrations from the house of Umm Hani, who was his cousin, and then he was taken from there, taken to the Gaaba, where he went back to sleep, and then he was woken up again. His chest was uh, split and washed again, and then he was taken on the Borak was brought, and this is an animal ridden by many, uh, you know, all the prophets rode on this Borak. And of course he wasn't, so he wasn't taken by himself. Like he didn't ascend by himself, right? Because it would only, it, it would be, it was more uh, comfort or more, or more um, honorable, right? More, it showed more honor to Sharif that he was given something to ride on. And, um, and we know that the Borak, he was kind of like messing around. He wasn't paying attention. And, uh, you know, um, so Jibreel, he, he uh, rebuked him. He said, are you doing this with Muhammad? And there's nobody who has written him you know, he, better than him. And then when he said that, he became, the Borak started sweating. 
right? Why? It's to show, it's seen that Jibreel has to say these words for us to see. Those, these ayat, this Isra and Mi'raj. Firstly, the, the ayat for the Prophet ﷺ was to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see those ayat. For us, what are the ayat? The ayat is to see how great our Prophet ﷺ is. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he folded up the entire creation. He folded up time, space, every single alam that we have we are that is known it was folded up and changed the physics was completely destroyed for the sake of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam everything that we what we know was complete it, it was a different world right the time and space and and even you know uh everything was changed for him sallallahu alaihi wasallam these were the ayat and we have to see what was the ayat for us is to know how great he is sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know so in the beginning of the journey right away our, the sign that we see is that Sina Jibreel alayhi salam, he is saying this, there is no person greater who is going to ride on you than this person, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. right? This is the sign for us to hearken, to listen up. This is a sign for all humanity, for the signs of the Meccans. Yeah, yeah, you know, if even if it didn't happen after, right after the Am al the the year of sadness, but still there was so much Aynat, right? They were giving so much hardship to the Prophet. So it's to show, you know, there's this is the greatest man, and this is uh, whether you listen or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, and then he is brought to where? Al Quds. Now, um, and subhanallah, alhamdulillah, right when it, this occurred to me, I read it right afterwards, I was reading, um, but it, you know, it came to my heart that subhanallah, this quds, this place, this is holy masjid, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to complete the holiness of this by, with his blessed footsteps there. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And alhamdulillah, I saw that some of, of the, uh, um, this is mentioned by Imam Nabhani, some of the, uh, I forgot who mentioned that, but uh, one of the scholars uh, of the Odia, he mentioned, he mentioned a similar, um, but that, that this Quds, he wanted, they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed the holiness of this place with the, the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, where, where, what would, would it be so muqaddas? Would it be so holy if he hadn't stepped there? Now, the, all this, whole, this um, Quds, which, which is the Ard al Mahshar, it is the uh, where all everybody will be gathered for the Hashar, for the Day of Judgment, right? Where everybody will be resurrected. And so, some of the scholars they said they, they, uh, the Prophet uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wanted to make it easy for the Ummah. That, that this place that the Prophet وسلم, has been here. And so it was Mubarak with his blessed footsteps, وسلم, and it became the uh, holier, it its holiness completed with him. So here, and here he is going to meet all the prophets. Here, all the prophets, they're lined up for him. They're lined up to greet him. And what happens? He, he, is pushed everybody pushes him to the forefront now again i want to say there's a difference of opinion some say that this some of the scholars say this happened actually after he did the mi'raj so that he went to the quds but he went did the mi'raj and came um uh or uh, that he, the the leading of the prophets in prayer was afterwards so there's a bit of a difference of opinion and again we we can take from that that you know, if it happened before, you know, it was uh, you know as we know it. But if it happened after, we see that this difference, this you know, for the narration that it happened after, that now Allah, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has the imamat, the imama of of course he's seeing he has the nur of the thatillah, right? He has the light, he has the nur from the the being of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala upon him. Right? And he leads the prophets in prayer according to that narration. Now, according to um, this narration that we're familiar with, that he uh, leads the prophets in prayer in Turakas, and he says after that, you know, they um, uh, they they meet him, uh, or it says before that, sorry, uh, that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed with the angels, and then when the prayer was over. Um, 
they asked him, they said, who is with you? And they said, uh, this Muhammad. And he says, has his prophethood began? And he says, yes. And, and they said, may he be praised as a brother and as a representative, as a Khalifa. And, um, uh, and may his coming be blessed. And then, he, then after that, he met the souls of the prophets. And now here, I want to say, um, when they met him, they all praised Allah. They all started praising Allah. And I, it's just beautiful. Uh, I was hearing, uh, I get, uh, so I listened to this sheikh. I mentioned the sheikh uh, Jab, um, Jabir uh, al-Baghdadi. And it's beautiful the way he explains it. He says, once the prophets, they saw the, uh, the once the other prophets they saw Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam our prophet they subhanallah they they glorified Allah look at this beauty look at look at him right look at him look at it. somebody who sees that our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is he going to say he says subhanallah and they began praising Allah subhanahu wa taala right and I, I love that uh, narrative because subhanallah that's what happened that's what happened they saw him then they all they're all praising Allah subhanahu wa taala now. So he met the souls of the prophets and they did praise the Lord. And I just want to read this part because I love it so much. This is one of my favorite parts of the Sita, how they praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then how the culmination, right? Because he is the one with the Muhammad. He's a sahib of Muhammad, right? He is the one who will be giving the Muhammad the praise that no one else has been given. But here... Of course, he, you know, he's praising. So, so Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he starts and he says, all praise be to Allah, oh, alhamdulillah, who took Ibrahim as his companion, right, and as his uh, khalil, right? And he gave me great sovereignty and caused me to be equal to a nation as I turned to Allah and an example and saved me from the fire and made a coolness and safety for me. Then Musa, alayhi salam, glorified his Lord and said, um, uh, and said, all praise be to Allah who truly spoke to me and chose me for his message and words and drew, drew me near to speak softly to or speaks privately to me and revealed the Torah to me and brought about the destruction of the people of Pharaoh through me and the rescue of the children of Israel through me. Then Dawood salam glorified his Lord saying, all, Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah who granted me sovereignty and revealed to me the Psalms and softened iron in my hands and submitted the birds and mountains to me and gave me wisdom and sound judgment and speech. And then Sulaiman salam praised his Lord and said, all praise be to Allah who submitted the winds, the jinn and humans to me and submitted the shayateen to me. Um, building me tall buildings and statues and he taught me the language of birds and all creatures and he made flow for me melted copper and iron as from a spring and he gave me great sovereignty that could not be attained by anyone after me then Isa alayhi salam glorified his lord and said praise be to Allah who taught me the Torah and the gospel and gave me the ability to cure the blind and the leper and to bring back to life the dead from with his leave with his permission and lifted me and purified me from those who disbelieved and gave me and my mother refuge from the cursed Satan so that he would have no power over us then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam glorified his lord and said each of you has glorified his lord and I will glorify my lord all praise be to Allah who sent me as a mercy to the world and a bearer of glad tidings and a warner to the people, to all people and revealed to me the Furqan in which everything is made clear and made my nation the best nation sent to people and made them a balanced and just people and made them the first and the last and expanded my heart, expanded my chest to contain guidance and remain removed my sin to contain guidance. He, he had his chest contained all of guidance along and, and removed my sin and elevated and raised the mention of my name and made me an opener and the seal. And Ibrahim salam, said at that, and he said, this is how Muhammad surpassed you. This is how Muhammad has has beaten you, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. By this, see how how he praised Allah 
They all praise Allah and may they're all so much perfection, so much beauty in all their praise. But the perfect and the most beautiful is for one, our Prophet. So then he was, after this happened, he was taken up into the heavens. And um, uh, rightly so, I want to just um, clarify that this is not, these are not Jannah. Right now, he, he hasn't gone to the to paradise. He will in this journey as well. He enters paradise. However, not at this point. When he goes to the seven heavens, he goes to the, he go, he's going to the heavens. He's going by turn to the heavens. Uh, sorry. What I mean by the heavens, so it's sama is skies. So we don't mean heavens by Jannah. Okay, so the seven skies, like a sama, uh, is translated by heavens or a sky. So there's seven skies, right? So he uh, ascends to right now to the seven skies. So here, the first sky. Now I want to I want to say this. Um, I want to read a little bit about, about this because you may have heard. Um, and just as myself, I've heard the, the hadith of the Isra and how it's come. And what I loved is about when I was listening to um, the talk about Isra from Sheikh Jabir's evening, he says, you know, we've all heard it this way, but it's actually this way. And I want to r relate that to you. So he says, um, when uh, the Prophet was taken up to the heavens, he says, um, so they get to the door, Sina Jibreel and um, the Prophet uh, gets to the door and he says, you know, he says, the keeper asks, um, uh, open up, right? And then he says, who is this? He said, is Jibreel, do you, um, do you have anyone with you? He said, yes, Muhammad is with, with me. And he says, has he been uh, sent? Has he, he been sent? Um, and Jibreel says, yes. And then he, so he says, welcome, greetings and welcome, uh, praiseworthy brother and praiseworthy representative or, you know, Khalifa. So this is how we've heard it, right? But he says, this is how the way it's supposed to be read. Okay, I'm going to reread it the way it should be read. He says, when Jibreel says, um, you know, they said, he says, open. He says, who is this? And he says, Jibreel, do you have anyone with you? He says, yes, Muhammad is with me. And he says, has he been appointed? Has he been sent? With all this excitement and <laughs> jubilation. It has he been sent? And he says, yes. And then so they open up and then the, the first sky over the first heaven is just bursting with joy and celebration. And who comes to meet him? He's Sayyidina Adam, alayhi salam, because it's not because he is the only one there. He says the heavens are filled with, the first heaven there is filled with people. But who's going to come and meet the greatest of mankind? except the greatest one who is in that heaven. And the greatest one who is in that heaven is Sina Adam. And everybody is fighting and everybody is like crowding to go see the Prophet Wasallam and greeting him. And the first one who's going to greet him is the greatest in that heaven is Sina Adam. And he said, you see the difference? So when I heard that, I was like, subhanAllah, of course that was the way it was done. Right. You know, there, nobody's sitting him down and say, oh, what was he? Has he been sent for? Or has he, you know, they're like, has he been sent? Right. And it's just everything burst open. Right. All there. The, you know, the celebration started. Right. This is the Mi'raj. This is the Mi'raj. This is the ayat that he's this Prophet him is being seen. And then after it's for us to see how great, how much, how, uh, what's going what's happening and so see adam comes out and he says this uh he comes and he says, welcome to my my uh son right he welcomes him and then um he says uh to the my the good son and the good prophet praiseworthy are you as a son you know and he says you know so much uh he, there is subhanAllah, I see so much love and also awe. Right? I see so much awe too, because this is his son. It, 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 he is the greatest of the prophets. You know, there's this, uh, there's this heba to him. This is, uh, you know, he has seen Adam as a prophet and he's meeting the greatest of prophets, right? So now he goes to the second and likewise, every single uh, heaven will be likewise. You know, they're going to ask, 
and to breathe who is with you and um he's gonna say uh is there uh, anybody with you muhammad they say has he been sent has he been sent you know it's all this excitement and you know uh welcoming and then every every uh buddy in that heaven so in the second heaven sina isa is the head of that heaven so there's a lot of other people there uh, or in that sky there's a lot of people there but he is the most, um, he is the say Sayyid in that uh, sky, right? Sina, uh, 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 Sina Isa. And, um, and here, you know, um, uh, in the then in the third heaven is Sina Yusuf, alayhi salam. And uh, we know that uh, that is said about the beauty of Sina Yusuf uh, compared to the beauty of our Prophet. It said that Sina Yusuf was given half of beauty and our prophet وسلم, was given all of beauty and so here it says sina yusuf's beauty came uh, folded up into the beauty of the prophet وسلم, when he saw the prophet because he was the asl right he's always the asl in everything he's the he's the origin he's the source so it is even the beauty of the in every single step here you know it's like the second heaven for example he is um the heaven of uh, the spirit and so Sina Isa is the spirit okay so he's and now the third heaven the heaven of beauty and see that Yusuf is the, the that um and so uh, so the, this is some of the things that the uh, scholars have said you know uh, in interpretation of um this um how the heavens go and then the fourth heaven it was Sina Idris uh, salam. in the fifth heaven, Sina Harun, sixth heaven, Sina Musa, and seventh heaven was uh, Sina Ibrahim. Salam. So um, now in the uh, fifth heaven, we know that what happened is that um, with uh, Sina Musa salam, is that, uh, uh, let's see if it's mentioned. So I'm just looking at, so I don't have to translate everything. So when he's told, um, right, okay, so uh, when he meets Sina Musa, he greets him, and then, um, so when the Prophet ﷺ walks past Sina Musa, he starts crying, and he said, um, he said, he was asked, why do you cry, and he says, the children of Israel, right, the Ben Israel, claim I am the best of people, but he has come after me, and were it only he, but with him are all his people, and he's crying, you know, Allah knows best, you know, this is one thing that we have to be very careful about, you know, presupposing something about, especially the prophets, right? Why do they do things? You know, we can guess or we can say, but, um, you know, some people say, you know, here, some of the scholars said, because he was sad, he wasn't, wasn't the best, right? And perhaps it could also be, you know, just like overwhelmed. You know, uh, just in terms of seeing the greatness of the Prophet wasallam, you know, seeing the greatness when you see that much beauty and that much like awesomeness, right? It's just overwhelming, isn't it? It's just so much at once. And he said, just him alone, he is so great. And then with all his ummah is with him, it was just, it's overwhelming. So if Allah Adam, was it something that um, was out of, uh, you know, that he's out of uh, like wishing that he could have been the best or what is it out of just, you know, so may, Allah knows best and the scholars have talked about it, but we should always say, you know, Allah, Allah knows best because we're not prophets and we can never come even close to a grain of sand of their, of their sandals, right? So we have no idea. And, uh, but we always think whatever they do that was for the best of um, reasons, for the best of intentions. And then what comes after um, uh, is that, uh, 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 is of course the seventh heaven and uh, in it is Sina Jibreel, uh, excuse me, Sina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Right, and um, there he said he's uh, just. I want to describe this. He was saying that Ibrahim salam, He said he saw a man with gray streaked hair sitting on a chair against the Beit Ma'mud, and this is the Beit Ma'mud is similar to the Kaaba in the seventh heaven, right? And he said, um, 
and he's, uh, he said, never did I see when the Prophet وسلم, was describing this, and he said, ne I never saw anyone who resembled your companion more than him. He said, so he looked very similar to Sina Ibrahim or um, so he said, nor one whom your companion resembled more than he. So they both looked like each other. And he said, I greeted him and he said, welcome to you, a son and a prophet. Right, welcome with his whole heart and being. And now, what does he say? Right, Ibrahim salam, he has a message for us. And um, he said, Salim Adamatik. And this is where perhaps, you know, our Salah Ibrahimiya, when we say Salam, it all comes together. And we'll see, okay, what's going to happen later too um, when the Prophet salam, meets with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But uh, after. So the Salat Ibrahimiyyah is put after the uh, Tahiyyah, which I'll mention. Um, so he says, give your Ummah Salam and give them this message that uh, the he heaven, Jannah, is flat, flat land. And he says, the, um, the, uh, the, that the heaven, the Jannah, its soil is good, its water is sweet, and its plants it's flat land and his plants are subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Right? And uh, so one of the uh, shiuch, they, they said that when Ibrahim alayhi salam, he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he could, the way to get closer to somebody you love, say somebody you, you, you like someone, right? But you have this awe of them. And they have children. What would you do? You say if you give that person's children a gift, or if you do something nice to their children, that person will their heart will soften for you. And so he he says he hears in Ibrahim alayhi salam. He knew how much the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved his ummah. So he said oh, he wanted to give a gift to us, so that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would love him even more. Right? This is his father. This is his forefather. Of course, he loves him, but he would love him even more. So, so this is the gift he he gave to his ummah, to the ummah of the Prophet. And by this, he gets coming closer to the Prophet. And by this, and Allah knows best. So then after this, when the Prophet goes past this and he goes past the heavens, Right. And um, now he is, uh, he said, then I was uh, ushered into heaven, to Jannah. Now, this is not a, past the seven skies, seven heavens. Now, this is Jannah. Okay. Now he goes into Jannah now. And then, you know, he describes some things and then he, he rises and rises and he says, he hears, when he hears the writing of the pens, the pens of, in the Loh al Mahfuz, in the preserved tablet, the pens of destiny that write down the destiny. And he hears that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he goes all the way, he goes, he sees Al Kothar, he sees, you know, things that in, in the, um, uh, you know, every in Jannah. And then he sees, uh, then he goes to Sidr, he goes up, up to the seven skies to the Sidr to Muntaha. And this is where no one has gone before. And this is just something that, this is the point here. This is the whole point of this journey, right? Linuriyahu min ayatina, right? So we can show him our signs. And this was the greatest sign, was the seeing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where it happens. So now after the Siddur to Muntaha, he, Sina Jibreel alayhi salam, he waits and he tells the Prophet him, to go forth. And we can see that all the prophets, they are in those heavens. But the Prophet, him, his place is beyond that, is beyond the Siddhat al Muntaha where nobody else has gone before. It is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. No third person, not even, not even a, a flickering of a wing, not a, no, nothing else. But him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now he is in the pre in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, uh, he said, At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatu. Who says this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and then what is you know to um I, I can't express how much we have to be appreciative of this that the Prophet وسلم, says assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah salihin he for he remembered us all of us when he was with in that place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone he what does he do he remembers his ummah and that was him sallallahu alayhi wasallam in all his shu'un in all his matters that's how he was he remembered his ummah when he was with him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone he remembered us and he said assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah salihin and that salam wallahi that salam that salam that happened 1400 years ago we can those those righteous servants can feel it today they feel it today that salam that he said in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it it reaches the righteous servants today and it reaches us today and that that peace that he said that time we feel it we have, we live it in our lives we have it in our lives and because of that we have peace because of him so that it's it's amazing mind-boggling that when how much wafa he had for us how much love and just care he had for us sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that we can we can feel that you know in every in every way of his being and he had he didn't forget us even there sallallahu alayhi wasallam right and in the most private place in the most closest place and he remembers us there it's amazing and so then of course then we have you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving him the prayers which yes Yes, for us, that will be the mi'raj. That is the mi'raj of the mu'min, right? Is the, the mi'raj of the believers our, our, our prayers. And this was the gift he brought back to us from his journey. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to preserve it and, uh, and do it in the best of manners, inshallah. And so then... Uh, so he's a lot and goes there he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the eyes of his head that's how they they say the some of the sahaba they described it with the eyes of his head sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with this and um just important to know you know it's the, something i know uh, often is that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now in the akhirah our bodies will be different you know our the capacity of our eyes we are in no our bodies are in no shape or form to look up to gaze upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we could not take it our bodies could not enter Jannah it would just the nur of Jannah would be destroyed uh, so our bodies will be changed drastically in the hereafter our you know our capabilities will change drastically but his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his was perfect and it was it was always perfect he will enter Jannah just as it as he was because he does not need to be more perfect. He is perfect the way he was. We, we, the way he is, he just goes from perfect to more perfect. His perfection is from one perfection to the, another more perfection. You know, that's what, how he, 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 go, he moves. So I would send him you know, from one way, one perfection to the other. His, uh, he doesn't need um, to change in that sense. So I would send him. So I see the time is kind of getting short and I did want to say just one thing about Shaban, actually. So when we come back, uh, you know, um, uh, so uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, um, right, and he said, um, uh, This uh, the, in Surah Najm, this is described, right? When he was in the highest part, part of the horizon, then he approached and uh, and um, descended or came closer, and it was at a distance of but two bow lengths or nearer. That nearer, we have no idea what that nearer means. How close was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And he said, and then he revealed to his servant that which he revealed, and he, he certainly. Um, uh, 
he and it was his sight never swerved the sight of muhammad never swerved nor did it transgress it did not move from the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and in truly he did he see the greatest of the signs of his lord subhanahu wa ta'ala so now um oh yes uh this uh i wanted to mention um here when he goes to the he is going with his uh this is a sign subhanallah that you know if it happened after thaif right now this is something that to think about this we ha- we remember in ha- it, in thaif what happened to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he he was stones were thrown and his slippers were bloodied his feet were bloodied that his slippers were like sticking and these little do they know these slippers they're going to be on top of the world they're going to be on top of the world. Not a, they are the, the, it is going to the, be the umbrella of the universe. These slippers, Allah, that he didn't step on with the, he didn't go to sit in, he didn't step on the divine carpet there with just his feet. He didn't take off his slippers to divine out of like respect. He, with his slippers, he went on those, that feet. And that's why the slippers, the Naal Sharif is so, uh, we, we put it on our heads. We, we, um, kiss it and put it on our heads because it's it's been where it's been in the presence of the divine right these these slippers people they're they're uh, you know the great prophets the great the greatest of the angels could not go where his slippers went so and this is and i had asked um shabnam to get uh, this poem ready if shabnam if you can mention that poem uh, uh that would be great inshallah Do I have to unmute you? Let me see. Has to unmute. Alhamdulillah. Sorry, Ustad. I was trying to unmute myself, but it wouldn't let me. Um, okay, girls. My, my girls are going to help me, inshallah. So this is an excerpt of the poem by um, Sheikh Yufa Yusuf al Nabahani, which we really loved. And I love teaching it to my children just to show the honor of the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Are you ready, girls? Upon, Upon the, the summit song. of this universe. <laughs> Is the sandal of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam elevated so all creations are under its shadow? At Dur Musa was ordered to move his sandal, while Ahmed at the throne was not asked to move his. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Jazakallah khairan. That was beautiful. And thank you. Thank you, girls. Inshallah. So here, um, subhanAllah, just, uh, you know, just to think about that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us, you know, showing all of the Meccans, showing all of the Muslims, everyone, that this, this sandal is going to be in a place, it's in a place where no one else has gone. It's on top of the universe, Allah, based on his blessed sandal, right? And this, what happened here is to think about, you know, in the conclusion, um, when, you know, we also see that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, entered Jannah, he saw different ahwal, he saw different uh, ta- uh, states of people in Jannah, people in hell, right? And he saw, Sina Musa, alayhi wa sallam, he saw him praying in his grave, Right. Uh, and then, you know, he, he was meet the prophets. He's like, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing, you know, those those of you the, who don't believe in Mecca, you people, you don't believe in Mecca. You, n- n- nobody needs them. Nobody needs you. Right. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, took out from the barzakh, the, the arwah of the best people to ever step on the earth, who are the prophets and the messengers. And they came to pray behind him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you don't believe, uh, we have, uh, he has the best of creation, the best people behind him. Behind, they got his back, right? They, they're they the best people. If those people wouldn't, they, 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 they're they replaceable. Nobody needs them, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending a sign. He doesn't need them. 
he doesn't need them. He has the best people behind him. And this, so what happened in the Isra? The earth was folded up for him. Time and place was folded up for him. The barzakh, I will say the awalim, all the awalim were folded up. All the awalim were changed. All the worlds were changed. You know, even time and place. We can't say that he, when he entered Jannah and he was seeing these people, he was getting a image of them. Or we can say, you know what? He was there at that time and he, the time was changed for him. It was changed. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can do that, right? He can do that. He, he, he saw it actually as it was happening. If there's some hadith, when I read them, I'm like, he, the Prophet وسلم, is looking at that, looking at it and describing us. When he describes Sayyidina Musa and I would describe how he's doing the hajj and how he's doing talbiyah and he's just with every like, such detail. He, he's looking at him, right? He's looking at him and describing that. You know, he's because time changes for him. Time has changed. Place has changed. The world's changed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to, it changes the whole world, the whole universe, everything we know. It, he changed it for his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, up and down, left and right, everything has changed for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you know that he is the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we, through his barakah, through his blessing, through his following, we became the best of Ummah. And now, um, yeah, I mentioned this last time too, but I, this is the appropriate time to mention it, right? The words of Imam Musiri and his Alfiya, you know, uh, How will the Anbiya raise, rise, your rising? Oh, oh, sky, there is no sky above you. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I do want to mention... Uh, just something quickly about Shaban before I know we got to wrap up, uh, keep it to an hour. So one of the things that, you know, of course, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, And now just to mention what is Barakah? What is Barakah according to him sallam? Right, baraka. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Barakah can be in food and drink and this and, and wealth. Yes, there is Barakah in that. But him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is he? He, he is asking for barakah. What does he want? Elevated, elevated. Barakah in our ma'rifah, in our irfan, in our knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those moments of closeness and uh, connectedness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakah in that. Let it start now. Let's not wait for Ramadan. Let it start now. And this is what this um, what we are asking for baraka. When hoping for the baraka to start now. That you know that we know that the Ramadan is such a spiritual and so there's so much lights and nur and futuhat and openings in Ramadan, right? But we are asking, let it start now. And it can start now. And this is the barakah that we want in our lives, right? The barakah of spirituality, the barakah of closeness, the barakah of ma'rifah. And Sha'ban particularly, so they say the, the Rajab was for istighfar, Sha'ban is for Salah and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Ramadan is Tahleel, La ilaha illallah, and Quran. Now, um, I just want to mention that, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in our Sha'ban, Ramadan, in, uh, in our Sha'ban, and allow us to reach Ramadan. I do have a, um, a course up that uh, it's on the website. I'll just uh, put up for um, on the chat box that if anybody wants to. Um, it's, it's a course that I did a couple of years ago. It's a recorded course for 33 sessions, but it will give a good, it's a good summary from the, from the birth or pre-birth to up to right before the hijrah. And inshallah, I'm going to be completing the second uh, session section of that, which will be the hijrah up to, you know, the mid, um, you know, mid Madini time, inshallah soon, uh, hopefully by Ramadan. But if anybody, you know, wants to get for, I would encourage the Sha'ban is a month of the Prophet Sallallahu and let that be something that you do for yourself. These are recordings. There are 33 recordings. They're five minutes each. It's so easy. And I made it that way because, you know, I had four kids and I was very busy. That's something that was doable for me. 
And um, so it's, uh, if you want, that's the link, you can find it on that page, inshallah, and register for that. Um, and there's there's also quizzes, it, there's about three, there's three questions for, like for every class, there's a recording, there's a question. So even if you say you heard a couple of recordings and then you can go back, to, it'll just be another way to reinforce that. And I think, um, inshallah, we're gonna have a talk about uh, you see it uh, with uh, teaching children, but one of the main things is to know the seerah yourself and to fall in love with it. And um, the Sina Ali, uh, Ali Salam, he said that whenever someone saw the Prophet وسلم, they would have, they were filled with awe, they would have haba of him. But whenever they got to know him, they would love him. Whenever they got to get to know him, they loved him. And this is where we want to go. We want to get to love him so well. How do you want to get to know him so well? And how are you going to know him without knowing his sira? Right? So, inshallah, that's that. And um, I don't know if Shabnam, do you have any um, announcements or something? If not, we will, I think we're going to see, keep posted if we're going to do this in Ramadan or not. I think it's going to be right at Ramadan time. So I'm not sure. Um, Right, Allah I, I do want to say that I'm planning to do a, a live Sira class, but I do want I did want some feedback in terms of when I should start and who just see um, who's interested in that. And if anybody would um, it's it'll be on the like a form, fill in form or feedback form will be uh, I'll be posting it on the uh, Facebook or the Netma website, inshallah. So um, with that, inshallah we'll close up. If you have, if you don't have anything, uh, Shabnam, inshallah, I'll close up. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma huwa ahlu. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma huwa ahlu. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma huwa ahlu. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusifun wa salamun ala muslimin wa alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Oh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to do, um, to really understand, give us the best understanding of the Prophet وسلم, of this deen, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the tongue of the Prophet وسلم, he said, Man arada Allahu bihi khayran, fi deen. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good of, he gives him fiqh of deen. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us fiqh of deen, and truly that from that fiqh is knowing him uh, as best as we can. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته